Flying off somewhere? Purchase your COVID-19 tests from BP Healthcare before traveling as the vaccinated travel lane requires testing at pre-departure and arrival from Malaysia and Singapore. You may now pre-purchase your COVID-19 tests to ensure a seamless journey. Our high-tech on-site labs at KLIA 1 and 2 make for a shorter way while you relax in our exclusive health screening lounge. For details, visit airport.doctortoyou.my. Brought to you by BP Healthcare. This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. Good morning and welcome to a special edition of Resource Center, the show where we discuss the tools and techniques that you need to be at the forefront of the ever-evolving world of business. This is Rich Bradbury. The Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, MOSTI, are constantly looking at new and innovative ideas, solutions, platforms, and scientific discoveries that will benefit Malaysians. One of the key pillars it focuses on is the use of technology and digitalization as a means of delivery of key public services to the Rakia. This year, MOSTI is taking the bold step of calling on all innovators, software engineers, subject matter experts, as well as concerned Malaysians to come together to help co-create solutions that will help improve how these services are delivered and thereby improve the well-being of the Rakia. Now, Mosti has organized a nationwide series of hackathons called My Hackathon. On the phone with me right now is Puan Rafiza Ghazali, the group CEO of Cradle, and she's going to tell me a little bit more. Hi, Rafiza. How are you? Good, thank you. Hi, Richard. How are you? Very well, thank you. Now, could you share with us, in a nutshell, what and why my Hackathon 2020 programs uh, was launched? I'm not so sure whether we all remember, uh, not long time ago, sometime around in March when the COVID-19 first started. Remember that, that time when everyone was not able to get you know, government services because, mm. um, you know, the, the, the at that time, you know, people need to be physically in the uh, government counter and etc. and people were mm-hmm. queuing. So there, there were a number of um, services that were disrupted because right. of the MCO. Mm-hmm. Then um, it was a time that the government thought that it, how, how do we address this? And, you know, the typical appointment of technical vendor takes months and months and 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 what is what what can we do something to actually also get the right yet to participate so that was that's what was how the idea uh, came about right huh. uh, they, they could have just you know appoint anyone but let's do something where the right yet can also participate and and in uh, July then the prime minister announced uh, my hackathon that was under the penjana yeah and the whole idea is, look, we're not trying to, you know, we're not trying to transform or overturn the government uh, services. That's that's mm-hmm. not the point. But what are the things that matters to the people down there? Uh, so right. You look, you're looking at um, things like the benefits, the money, the registrations, you know, th- stuff, low-hanging food. What, mm-hmm. is, what, what are the pain points that are, you know, experienced by the right yet during the MCO. So we, you know, in and in August, 28th August, uh, the minister then announced, okay, we're going to do this nationwide My Hackathon. And you have to remember at that time, um, you know, people were still down because a lot of people have lost jobs. So this gives an opportunity for those uh, who have an idea, who feels the pain, you know, um, mm. to contribute to this, what we call it, nation problem statement, crowd solution uh, initiative. So that mm. was how the idea came about. Yeah. What are some of the public service issues that have been identified through my hackathon as critical and in needs of immediate digital solutions? Okay, things like, for example, at that time, there were a number of initiatives and assistance that were announced uh, mm. by the government. Uh, but at that time, they have yet to establish how this assistance can be passed on to the rakyat in a quickly manner without them having to come to the counter. So that's mm. one, right? Mm-hmm. And then a lot of medical records as well. You know, um, things were still on on paper, on books, 
um, antenatal, uh, uh, for example, uh, informations, uh, vaccination informations, you know, things, I'm talking about the government, uh, you know, services, things mm. were still on pen on paper, right? So how could mm. we digitize that? So you see a lot of the problem statements that we came out, it's not um, how I will call it, overpowering type of um, uh, digitalization. These are quick wins uh, that have high impact to the right yet. Another one is, um, for example, online registration management, verification and issuance of the um, OKU cards mm -hmm. uh, and monitoring of people with dis disabilities because they were having a lot of issues for them to be physically present at, you know, at a time when they need services or when right. they need um, um uh, benefits. So those yeah. are the kind of things that we were looking at, you know, uh, how, how I call it, low hanging fruit, high touch points to the right yard, especially for those who are what I would call it, that, that, that needs most, you mm. know, the, the B40, the A OKU. So those are what I call it the target markets, the, those that are more impacted compared to the rest of us here. Yeah. And from your experience, and of course from Cradle's point of view, how quickly should our government catch up with digitalization? How can they uh, speed it up with the involvement of startups? Okay, when it talks about startups working with the government, uh, I think in the past there's always been, um, you know, we there, there are some challenges with regards to, say, for example, the procuring of the services of the startups because startups right. you know one of the things that they don't have uh, and which government before they engage anyone is track record so mm -hmm. a lot of the startups don't have track records and in fact the, the good thing about this my hackathon and the reason why we did this it starts that process which was probably not in place before how do you, you know, you have individuals, a group of people, a group of unemployed. We even have, like, for example, there was a team that addressed uh, the healthcare, right? And we have a, a team of doctors and nurses that just, you know, for the fun of it, they participated because, you know, they they were the one feeling the pain points, right? Sure, so they yeah. And they have a lot of ideas. You, you'd be surprised at the ideas that come from them because they are, you know, the frontliners, they are the one down mm. at the ground. So mm. you've got some really good uh, solutions, but they may not necessarily have, you know, the the know-how, how to how how to do this digitally. And they mm. will partner with people, you know, that have uh, got that know-how. So you see a lot of what I will call it, a lot of simple solutions, but for some reason, it never get... Um, it never get implemented because they're probably low down the list. Yeah, uh, when yeah. you look at a lot of the government departments, they tend to to address those what I, I call it, um, you know, big projects. But sometimes it's the small, small, um, you know, digitalization that matters to the right. Yeah. How yeah. can I make um, appointment online? You know, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. which probably, you know, from the government point of view, that's probably not high on their list. So, and this is the reason why, you know, we proposed to the Ministry of Finance uh, then, is that you should uh, involve, um, you know, the partnership with the startups because startups, the way how uh, they were developed, it's to address problem statements. Yeah, yeah. So pro yeah. address problem statements. Okay, how can we how can we address this? So so that's the reason why we suggest. Hey, why don't you get the startups or individual or aspiring startups uh, to help you to solve these problems, which will probably not be a high priority for them. Twenty twenty two obviously is approaching very quickly. What are some of the challenges uh, uh, do you think that are awaiting entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurial leadership? And what are the immediate challenges faced by local startups in growing and scaling their businesses to the outside market? So now that they have, for example, because when they, when they do their project deployment, they were doing it with a specific host ministry, right? Now, different ministries, they have their own what I would call it a priority list of what are the things that they want to do. 
So just because I give you an example again, like uh, Neon AI with their Root Plus uh, management system, just because they are able to deploy that in Sarawak, that doesn't mean that they are able to deploy that, you know, with the other states. So these are some of the things that, that we are working with them so that, um, you know, because like a lot of other people, uh, and it's natural, they want to see wh what have you done so far. So we can share the success stories to the other states and hopefully that can get the buy-in of, uh, of the other states. So that's one example, right? Number two, as usual, is the money, is the budget, budget allocation. Now that they have done, for example, uh, I, I give you an example, uh, one of the solution is to maintain a, a digital record of antenatal. They have it an app, so for all the mothers, so that the mothers, they can go to any government clinic. So they've already got that record, um, you know, in, in, in an app, right? Now, what we have done uh, up to this year, we have, say for example, we have tested that with five government clinics and they've already accepted, right? Now, how do we scale that? How do we get the rest of the government clinics to also accept that? So these are some of the, because, you know, in order for you, it's, it's not something that you have to tell all the government clinics that they need to use the system because each of them, they've got their own, yeah, their own methods, right? So it's not it's not so easy. So it's not, it's not something that, it, and, and plus, you know, this comes from Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation. So for something like that, that needs to come from that particular ministry, right? So those are some of the things that, and, and again, a lot of the times when we want to scale up to other jurisdictions, the first thing that they ask, who's going to fund this, right? So that's also another issue. And funding, as you know, things are still difficult. It's also prioritizing uh, funding. Each ministry, They've got their top, I don't know, top 10, top 15 projects. You know, this could be, you know, number 89 or something like that, you know. So, and, and, when, and, and when you have that, the urgency is, you know, the, 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 the speed, the urgency also that's going to be a challenge to the startups because the startups, they don't have the luxury to wait for the next 18 months. Bigger companies, they can. They have that holding power, right? They can, they can sort of delay and KIV some of their project deployment in the next year or so. But for the startups, every week counts. If they're not, you know, if say, we, we give them 250,000, right? So they've employed, say for example, six or four engineers. They don't have the luxury of, oh, by the way, we can hire you, but the project can only start next year. So those are some of the challenges that we have. So what do they do? Then they can't be waiting for the next 16 months. So, you know, so, and, and we saw some of these, some of our uh, uh, hackathon startups, they, they, they're, they're, they're quite, um, they're very creative. They said, okay, since we can't start this because we've got some issues and stuff like that, delays, we're going to do that with the private sector. Uh, along with the government's efforts to achieve greater national development, as outlined in the 12th Malaysia Plan, 2021-2025, what are some of Cradle's plans to empower the startup ecosystem in 2022? Okay. Oh, I, I love that question because this is something that I've been wanting to share with uh, everyone. Um, as you know, recently, uh, the budget 2022, the government announced uh, 20 million allocation uh, to Cradle called my startup initiative. So as you can see, um, as we all know, starting a, a startup, especially at the early stage, it's not just about giving them money. And that's something that, you know, Cradle has been doing for the last 18 years or so. We are more known as a funding agency. People right. come to Cradle because they want to give grants. So one of the things that, you know, we shared with the government, look, it's not just about giving money but we want to build them into global, potential global um, startups. And you need to mm -hmm. start them from young. So, you know, looking at, say for example, an education system, primary school, right? You need to have the right foundation and that will give them a better chance for them to scale. Because if you don't have the foundation right, if you don't equip the founders and the founders teams, mm -hmm with the right skills, with the right tools, you know, at the beginning, then they're going to be struggling 
you know, when they want to try to scale. So that's what Cradle has been empowered to do from next year onwards. So we've been given the 20 million allocation. That 20 million is in addition to our grant allocation, which is under RMK12. Mm. Right. So this is an addition uh, allocation. So our grant uh, programs is still going to continue. So this 20 million, what we're going to do, we're going to give them what we call that intervention capacity building, build the founders so that they are resilient founders, so that they're better prepared when there's mm. safer or another crisis. That's what we found. A lot of our startups, when COVID-19 uh, happened, they struggled. They struggled mentally. They struggle yeah. with respect to keeping their startups together because, you know, perhaps they don't have enough cash runway uh, to, to hold on to, uh, to their business even for, you know, three months. So those are some of the things that we want to equip the startup so they're better, they're, they're resilient, they are in a better position to scale up. And so that by the time they sort of, you know, I wouldn't call it graduates, but the, the, by the time they are, you know, uh, in the in going to uh, scale up, they, they are investment attractive, you know. So gotcha. a lot yeah. of the things that we, we always question when the startups come to us is that, is your solution able to scale up beyond Malaysia, beyond mm. Kuala Lumpur? You know, mm. how easy it is. Do you require a lot of regulatory requirement? You know, what are your plans to, to attract the customers? What's your uh, mm. customer acquisition strategy? Is it, good to, is it going to cost more? Is it going to erode your margin? So those are some of the things. If you don't address at the beginning, then they will struggle later. So this is like, like we are not lacking, how I would call it, good innovative technology startups. We've got a lot of them. But what sometimes they don't know is they don't have a story to tell to the investors. Mm. And that's, mm. you know, equally important. It's not For just sure. about the technology. It's like, yeah. okay, how are you addressing, you know, the same problems that we're having in Indonesia or the same problem that we're having in, you know, even other parts of the world? So, mm. so those are some of the things that they need to start looking at. They may not have that when they first start a startup, but it's something that they, something that they should be looking forward to and get themselves mm. prepared. So those are the things that we find. Unfortunately, we've got some really good founders. They have to learn it the expensive way. So i.e., mm. you know, close down their current startups and start new ones. Let's try not, yes, of course, we do have to accept there will be some casualties along the way, but, you know, let's try to minimize that and let's, you know, focus on really building them so that, you know, they can bring this, their startups to the regional level and to the global level. Thank you very much, Rafiza. Thank you, Richard. I've been speaking with Puan Rafiza Ghazali, Group CEO of Cradle Fund, and you've been listening to Resource Centre on Enterprise. BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.